All right, everybody. Uh, Brian Good here, Lon, uh, with uh, Ma- Mallory Schnell. Did I say your name right? Sorry, yes. Mallory. Let me turn the camera so everybody can see you here. Sorry about that. Uh, ooh, a little out of focus. All right. Uh, Mallory has described outside as being... Disgusting. Disgusting outside. Yes, yes, it is disgusting outside. I agree with that. It is very humid out there. So, uh, heat index is 97 right now here in Louisville. Sure. Uh, we've been looking over the data today, and uh, a lot of questions, right? Yeah. A lot. Yeah, it doesn't seem very easy. And uh, B- Bill's a big player in this, as well as some other factors that we're examining for early next week that are going to be just as much of a headache. So, having said all of that, sit back, grab you some popcorn, uh, maybe a, a while. Get, you, get you a soft drink and relax, and I'll try to explain our setup here as we head into uh, the next several days for those of you that really want to know how things are going to play out for uh, not only tonight, but for the weekend and a little bit beyond. Our severe risk today is located in the yellow zone north and east of Louisville, but I would not rule out a warning warning of any type, really, that could still take place, flash flood or severe thunderstorm warning here locally. Uh, That is still a possibility. So even though we're not in the yellow zone, technically, for a lot of us, everybody has a chance at a gusty storm or a brief warning to be issued for those gusty winds, so I wouldn't rule it out. Otherwise, tomorrow, we're more in that marginal risk. Some of that is Bill moving in across Memphis. Some of that is actually just the heating of the day and some boundaries left behind here in town. And that green shade area, the marginal, is for us because of Bill on Saturday. And it's going to be anywhere in the southeast corner there of the track of Bill is going to be the crucial point on that one. Uh, Mallory's got a rundown here with your uh, temperatures across both sides of the river. Okay, so right now in Louisville, uh, we are sitting at 89 degrees. But like Brian said, we're at a heat index of 97. Um, Disgusting. So, yeah, it's pretty gross out there. Yeah. The humidity's high. Um, be sure to stay hydrated because it's it'll get to you. Um, across the river, looking at Salem, once again, 89 degrees. Kind of some lower um, 80s as we move into Seymour and the like, but pretty much mid to upper 80s around the region. Um, feeling even hotter with that humidity. Um, so be weary of that, and we will have some scattered storms moving to the area later on this afternoon. Yeah, some are like, even popping up right now. You got it. If, I, if we hit 90, by the way, which is likely to happen to be uh, day number 9. nine. That's nine too many. And keep in mind, it is still technically spring. Yes. Summer arrives Sunday. All right, here's the latest on the radar. And, yeah, we do have quite a few storms uh, popping. Uh, Mallory and I were watching the storm in Owen County uh, blow up on the radar. It's got a warning out for that. A few storms in northeast Kentucky. Uh, some of these storms here south of Lexington. This is over Jessamine County. This storm we've been watching since it left Washington County, or actually Marion County, uh, in Kentucky. And is uh, showing signs here that it could produce uh, warning as it tracks over I-75. Other activity now begin to pop in southern Indiana, and we're watching this activity in southwest Kentucky. A lot of this is going to be a big player for us here in Louisville for the evening time frame. So we got a lot of moving parts. A lot of this is tropical downpours throughout the evening. Our short-range model here does show a lot of this blowing up here randomly all the way through the late afternoon, through the evening hours. A warning or two can still be issued. Then we get into an interesting setup after midnight tonight toward uh, sunrise, where we're likely going to see a band of thunderstorms develop and heavy rain somewhere in our area. We don't know if it's going to be focused in Indiana or it's going to be I-64 or Kentucky. We're getting conflicting data on that. But it's looking likely that it's going to happen, and it could be a very heavy rain producer and likely will affect the morning commute. So be aware of that chance and make sure to watch the newscast this evening, and especially 11 tonight, and then, of course, Christy on sunrise in the morning for the latest on how that could progress. Here's another model that has the same time frame. Showing the activity tonight, moving through. Some of those locally strong. We'll get a break, and then boom, we're back into the action. Your sunrise with some clusters of heavy rain moving through the Ohio Valley. Now, this is important because Melanie and I were looking over stuff because if we can skip out on this early stuff, the rain totals Saturday may not be that bad. Mm-hmm. But the biggest concern is going to be if we get this earlier activity. Yeah, it's definitely gonna it's definitely going to add up. We've been looking at the models, and... Um, some of them are saying lower than kind of what we expected, but it really all depends on um, what pops up before Tropical Storm Bill really even moves in through here. Yeah. Um, yeah Got to look at the point. whole weekend. Yeah, um, it's a cumulative map. So when you see these rainfall maps, don't panic, all right? They are a cumulative <laughs> map talking about the stuff this afternoon all the way through when Bill leaves. So it, it's a grand total. So keep that in mind when we show these in a second. Uh, it is showing a chance for some thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. It is trying. Now, the RPM model here you're looking at, it's trying to throw in one of the feeder bands outward enough at us Friday night to get a jump start on some of this heavy rain moving through Friday night. Now, the other models are not as aggressive with that throwing out of a feeder band. 
It is possible we are watching this trend because the models in the past 24 hours have become a little erratic here with the details and the structure of the remnants of Bill as it passes through. So I would not rule this scenario out. Either way, at 2 a.m., there is Bill starting to move in, and the RPM keeps trending south with the core of it. Now it's located in Kentucky entirely, the way it's looking here early on Saturday. Let's take you beyond that now. As we get into uh, midday uh, on Saturday into the afternoon, it moves out of here by the afternoon hours. And look at that. It takes us up to 89 Saturday afternoon. We're in the 70s most of the day. Bill leaves and the temperature skyrockets. Uh, am I going to believe that scenario? It seems a little fast on that. But we'll watch it and see uh, because the track is going to be important because anywhere along the track, along that core of that spin is going to be your heaviest rain totals, several inches potentially. Anywhere south of that is going to be where you have the better wind energy to produce maybe some rotating thunderstorms. We're talking about, yes, a few brief, weak tornadoes are possible or some gusty winds. It depends on several factors on that. So that's why the SBC has this in that marginal zone. I agree with that. It's very marginal right now because we don't. it's not a typical low pressure. It's, it's a very warm uh, aloft in at the ground. And when you have that warm column, you don't have as much ability to get those strong winds to become a reality at the surface, but uh, we'll watch it. Either way, we then hit it to Sunday, which is going to lead into a whole other scenario that uh, we'll get into in just a second. Are you stressed yet? Because I'm stressed. Uh, yes. I haven't I didn't gotten into six and a half minutes yet. All right. <laughs> Here's the latest look at the uh, RPM. This is the model you just saw. And again, it's tracking further south with that core moving through. So now it's saying the heavier rain totals will be along the parkways. Remember a couple of days ago, it was aiming for Terra Hope in our northern counties. Now it's aiming for Kentucky. This is just one model's idea. Granted, it's a short range model and it updates constantly so it could easily flip back around to the north again. But I will say the trend has been since last night to slowly move that core southward. southward. Mm -hmm. So is it onto something or is it just way off? We'll see. Either way, you see the potential for several inches of rain. Again, this is a grand total. It's taken into effect the rain tonight and the Friday and Friday night and Saturday. So grand total of four to six inches is possible, not all at once from Bill. So that may help ease the flooding potential if we can space out these surges of rainfall enough to allow some drainage to happen. And that will keep us from running into a major flooding scenario. If we were to get that much rain in six hours or less, we would be looking at a major flooding event. I don't think that's gonna happen right now. I think we're gonna have enough breaks to prevent that, but it is uh, something we'll watch. Now in contrast, here's another short range model. Here is the NAM model. And it's nothing like what uh, we're hearing about with the RPM. Uh, an inch to inch and a half. What a difference. Yeah. And further to the north, takes the core mainly along the Ohio River, if not southern Indiana, and only spotty uh, downpours to the south. You see the dilemma. You, <laughs> you see, see why my hair. Stress. You see why my hair's doing <laughs> great. All right, so here is the uh, wind fields with uh, Bill, and it is worth watching because that pocket of yellow and red tells us some good shear here and turning of wind. The winds are turning from about southeast to almost due west as you go from the ground up. And that's enough turning of the atmosphere, which is typical in low pressures and in tropical systems to get these brief tornado potentials. And again, the core of that happening will be just south of the core of the spin. That would be the zone to watch. So the path is important to figure out. On top of that, these are the P-watts. Precipital water tells you the potential for how much rain would you get if one of these cells of uh, downpours were to sit in your backyard for one hour? How much could it produce? Two and a half inches in one hour is tremendous. Very moisture, uh, moisture lightened uh, system here moving through. And uh, the NAM model is indicating that very heavy rain will pass through the area, even though it's moving along. Thank goodness for that. If this system were to stall, we would have a whole different ball game. But at least it's moving enough to uh, prevent a major issue. But here's what's interesting now uh, once we get past Bill, is that the P-watts, the amount of moisture from this tropical system gets sucked into a front, a boundary, that's trying to lift back to the north. That is actually going to add into an interesting scenario for early next week where we've got a lot of tropical moisture from Bill. We've got a lot of heating that is building in and you've got some wind energy aloft. And here's that wind energy that we're talking about in the upper levels. It is a bad recipe for MCSs, mesoscale convective systems or MCCs, depending on what you've heard in your uh, weather language, your weather geeks out there. <laughs> but they're basically just big blobs of thunderstorms, little small areas of low pressure that ride a boundary and they can have very strong damaging winds over a widespread right. area and and even though a few tornadoes can be rolled out but mainly the damaging winds straight line winds are the biggest threat with those and the wind fields are beginning to really pick up here starting sunday and through tuesday from a northwest flow 
So we've got to watch these pieces of energy moving through day and at night for the potential for these MCSs to develop. And we're seeing that trend. Uh, I'll go through this real quickly. That is moving through here on the models. You can see how we start to see these MCSs rolling through all the way through Tuesday. We've got to figure out that flow because right now, if that does happen, that means the core of the heat wave next week may actually stay just to our south. It's going to be close, though. Stay tuned for more today beginning to 5.